we received the same feedback, not only on our YouTube channel, but also with our clients. They say, I've experienced a severe injury, a torn ACL, menisci, frozen shoulder, lower back pain, all sorts of problems and common complaints that people have. And once they start picking up kettlebells, they see a major improvement. So that's the reason why I came up with this video. I'm gonna give you a proper guide based in experience, forged in the fire of working with real people in real life to help you bounce back to your original performance if you have experienced or suffered a severe injury. Before we get started, I have a gift for you, a free 30-day kettlebell challenge. Check the first link in the description. The critical point of bouncing back from a severe injury is to make sure that you're still able to move. If the injury is fresh and you experience excruciating pain and you're not able to move at all, you want to talk to a doctor, a therapist, in order to check what's going on. And then you probably have to take some time off first in order for your body to heal. But after this healing process is complete, there's a couple of things that you can do in order to bulletproof your body. The first thing that you want to check is your posture. On one hand, if you don't correct your posture throughout the day, this might lead to problems down the road. On the other hand, it might be that your posture took a hit after your injury. So here's what you do. Hold the stick, connect it with your hips, your upper back, and your rear head, and now just stand there. And you wanna get a firm understanding of what this really feels like. For me, this is a natural way to stand upright. If you feel that you have to do a lot of corrections, you have to pull your head back and now you feel some tension, this means that your posture needs some work. The second thing that we wanna take care of is your hips. We wanna train them first and we also wanna unlock them. So here's what we do again. You connect the stick with your hips, upper back, rear head again, and now we learn the hinge. Pushing the hips back, upper body leans forward in a 90 degree angle, and now I make sure I don't lose contact with any of these important touch points with the stick. So my hip is still connected, my head is still connected, and my upper back is still connected to the stick. And now I come back up and fully extend the hips. <sighs> Another thing that you wanna watch out for is that you don't become knee dominant. Knee dominance means every time we have to use our hips, people instead use their knees. We see this a lot of time many times often in our practice. And if we always start working from the knees, then we always put the pressure or the load on the knees instead of on the hips. So it's all about the hips. And here's an important cue that you can memorize. Think about you have an imaginary wall behind you, and this imaginary wall, you wanna touch it with your hips. Now, if you just do it like this without leaning forward, you will fall backwards. So we have to use some counterbalance in form of our upper body that has to lean forward. And the spine has to be straight. If you do the hinge on a regular basis without even loading it, you will feel some delayed onset muscle soreness the next day if you're not used to working with your hips. And that's a good indicator that you have to understand on how to reprogram and rewire your brain to start using your hips more. After checking for posture in the hips, we now want to see what's up in the shoulders. So here's what we're going to do. We still use the stick. Now I grab it at shoulder width. I connect it with my hips. And now from this position, I really extend the elbows, fully straightening the arms. And now I slowly bring my arms overhead as far as I can without lifting up our stressing muscles, but really pushing the shoulders down and just letting the arms do the work. And as soon as I reach this position where the stick is approximately above the middle of my head, I wanna pull it back as far as I can. And now this is where it stops, and now I come back down. We do this again, lift the stick up, fully straighten your arms, pull them back as far as you can. Once we have mastered this, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna grab the stick even wider, as far as you can, and now we do the same thing. I keep my elbows extended, 
And now I want to reach the back of my hips, or the lower back, with the stick, and then I come back up without me having to bend the arms. Watch again. This is a fantastic exercise to start loosening up tightness up in the shoulders and to even build some strength. Similar with the hinge, if you do this on a regular basis, especially after an injury, you will feel that your muscle will react the next day. Now we consider one of the best shoulder mobility drills that I do on a regular basis. Grab the stick, shoulder width, now a little bit wider, and now here we go. I'm lifting my right arm over my head. I keep my left arm down. Now I want to touch my lower back like we did in that drill before. And now I lift my left arm over my head. It's like putting on a jacket. And now I reach the original position. You circle the stick around your head while keeping your arms as extended as possible. Switching sides. Again, a powerful drill to open up your shoulders. And the tightness, most of the time, is derived upon the fact that we walk around like the hunchback of Notre Dame. And the fact that we always have our cell phone in our hands like this doesn't really help. So with this drill, we are learning to open up the chest area. So now we have taken care of three important aspects of physical qualities. And that is, we've taken care of our posture, we're taking care of our hips and we're taking care of our shoulders. Now we're going to take a look at the body weight squat. The body weight squat is an underutilized tool that can help you build strong hips. And I strongly believe in the radiation technique. What is the radiation technique? If we strengthen our center, which is right around here, and our strongest muscles sit right around here, then this radiates down and upwards. So the strength is distributed throughout the whole body if we have a strong and solid core. Now let's check out the body weight squat. Shoulder width stance. Now both of my feet, I point them out to the left and to the right respectively, approximately 30 degrees. Now I push my hips back. Remember, that's the hinge, right? You push the hips back and now you extend your arms in front of you. And now you wanna reach that bottom position and keep your hips high. Do not fall down. Keep your hips, hips high and extend your arms in front of you. Don't let your arms reach for the floor. Extend them in front of you. This is a back squat originated from Mark Ripto from starting strength. Now we come back up. And we try this again. Pushing the hips back. Extend your arms in front of you. And now really sit into your hips. So pushing the hips back. And I'm distributing the weight alongside my heels and my midfoot, but this doesn't mean that I lift my toes off the floor. I keep my feel, uh, heels firmly planted. <sighs> Many people shy away from the squat because they do it wrong. So here's one of the major mistakes that people make when learning the back squat. I've mentioned a few minutes earlier that many people are knee dominant. This is how they start squatting. And since they experience already existing pain, this is what causes even more pain. So while I'm not that guy who says you're not supposed to push your knees as far out as you can, for example, in a front squat like this where my knees now go over my toes, I'm saying the following. Do not do this if you're not strong enough yet. If you experience pain in your knees, we want to focus and distribute the weight towards our hips. Here's the major mistake that people do. You're probably already guessing it. You see? Now everything's loaded right here and nothing's loaded right here. So the weaker muscles have to take the brunt of the weight while the strongest muscles can relax. That's not the idea. So think about this, pushing the hips back and watch as my knees stay in place. Yes, they do bend, but watch my shins. They don't move forward, they stay in place. And this is a perfect exercise for you to do on a regular basis if you have knee pain. I guarantee, try it. 
If you're having pain and you do a squat like this, you won't feel it in your knees. I'm 100% sure. Now, of course, if you have advanced to the next stage, I am recommending that you should also learn how to front squat, where the knees are able to really move in a natural way and then they cross your toes or whatever have you, because this builds strength in this area as well. But if we think about the radiation technique, we have to be strong first here before we move it down or up the line. So now let's check out some loaded exercises with the kettlebell that you can do in order to strengthen your body, bulletproof it, and bounce back from your injuries. I'm gonna show you three exercises. Exercise number one is the hand-to-hand -hand swing. Watch. Here's how we do it. Half a meter distance to the kettlebell, hinge, grab the bell in a loose grip, Swing the bell between your legs. Your free arm simulates what your leading arm is doing. Now we hip thrust the weight upwards. Boom, kettlebell starts flying. Switching hands, kettlebell drops. I wait for the arm to reconnect with my hips. It's called timing. And now as I'm hinging, I'm pulling the arm close to my body, building up some tension. And now I let the kettlebell travel as far back as it wants. My free arm is simulating my leading arm. And then the exercise starts again. Exercise number two is to clean and press. Especially the press is important, but we also want to learn to clean. Watch. Here's how we do it. We start in the same position like in a swing, half a meter distance. So I swing the kettlebell between my legs, hip thrust it upwards, and think about stabbing your feet into the floor. It's physics. If you push your feet down, the weight comes up. So the kettlebell comes up, and as it comes up, you insert your full wrist inside the window of the kettlebell, and you rack it close to your body. One, two, three. Go as high as possible to the handle so that your web space connects with the upper corner of the kettlebell handle and your forearm bone now connects with the horn, the lower horn of the kettlebell. Now from this position, here comes the press. If I press the weight up, my upper body is leaning backwards a little bit because I want to distribute the weight alongside my center of mass that's right on my hips. So now I press the weight up in a straight line. And as I press the weight up, my thumb is pointing slightly towards my head, biceps close to my ear, elbows fully extended. I drop the bell back down in a straight line. And if I drop it from here in the backswing, I just open up my palm like this and extend my forearm and drop it into the backswing. The final exercise is the rack squat. And here's an important disclaimer. If you're experiencing pain in your knees with this exercise, substitute it with the back squat. Here's how we do it. The reason why I'm such a big fan of this exercise is because as you rack the bell upwards, it wants to pull you down. So your rotational muscles have to do some work and then if we squat down and come back up, of course, we train our most important muscles located in the hips. It's easy to do. You have to understand the clean first, rack it, and now we are engaging in this type of front squat. So we don't push the hips too far back. We are hinging, yes, but now we push the knees out. As a bonus, I want to show you one of the least technical, but also one of the most beneficial kettlebell exercises that you can do. Especially if you're experiencing back pain, this exercise can work wonders. Grab it in a deadlift stance, start walking. This is what we call the suitcase walk. The end. After you've covered your distance, you're switching sides, and that's it. And we, we can take it a little bit further, clean the bell up, and start walking. 
And after you've mastered the press, you press it overhead and start walking. And then you can dismantle the exercise again. Until you drop the bell back down and switch to the other side. Now, if you want to combine all the exercises that I've shown you, the ones unloaded with the ones loaded into a powerful workout, here's what you need to do. Do all the exercises that I've just shown you, the ones loaded and the ones unloaded for one minute straight. This should equal up to seven, eight, maybe 10 minutes of work if you have to rest a little bit in between. But I'm a big fan of trying to move as unbroken as possible because I want the training or the workout to simulate life. In life, rarely we can sit down and relax when we are under pressure and under tension. So that's what I love about kettlebells. The kettlebell forces you to acquire skills that can then be transferred into everyday life. Here's the next thing that you have to do, like the video, consider subscribing, share with a friend, and if you made it this far, consider joining the House of Stock and become a Labor Stock member. Exclusive follow along workouts, exclusive challenges, exclusive skill courses. It's the Netflix of kettlebells, that perfect kettlebell membership you've always dreamed of. Check the link right here and get started for only $1.